I don't remember my first fishing trip. My mom tells me I was, I was born in May. She said, that's September. My dad took me out of her arms and I'm taking the boy fishing. As a very young kid, I was seven to 10. I had my own little commercial license. And so I was on the Chesapeake Bay at 3.30 in the morning in my uncle's boat, my dad. I've always fished. My great grandmother was an incredible chef. So I don't know if it was you know in the bloodline or, or, or what. I think a lot of it was just observing and watching. Some of the biggest memories I have is preparing the salmon for the winter. And we're not just saying, you know, two, three, four fish. I mean, we're talking, you know, 150, 200 salmon. That's what the family lived on. What I really learned, you know, you'll never go hungry as long as the tide goes in and out, you know. You should always be able to provide a meal for your family. Fish in the diet is important. When it's not having it once a month, you know, it's having it maybe two or three times a, a week. When I found out I had diabetes, I didn't take it serious, you know, at first. You always felt like you're gonna live forever, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh, I could lose limbs, I could lose eyesight. I got to do something. Earlier in my life, I did a lot of drinking. My dad died when I was 12, my first wife died when I was 29 from cancer. I was extremely angry. My fear and my shame, my desperation, drove me to the water. I'd be angry, I'd be frustrated, and I'd go out there and I'd, I'd go fishing. And I was able to find that refuge that if something got rough in my life, instead of drowning myself in alcohol, I could get in my boat and nurture that spiritual connection. This one little small part of that creation, salmon, is a tool that I've been given to keep my sobriety. The abundance of salmon we used to have it was phenomenal. In the 1980s, after the scientists, the colonists, we're going to have a problem with salmon very, very quickly. It happened. To think of, you know, our fishermen going out there and not being able to harvest, it's kind of devastating. And I thought, how can I give back to the salmon? The Pogi Club and the fact that they're willing to help the tribe is priceless. I think that, you know, the joint effort in us all working together, along with the state, is an important relationship. Both the tribal community and our little kids at Pogi Club, we have more in common than what some people think. They have a great respect for their resource, and so do I. The resource has a lot more hurdles with pollution and development than they've ever had. And so having the hatcheries to help these salmon runs is important. Without hatcheries, we wouldn't have the number of fish we have today. Hopefully someday, we can make that leap from a hatchery-supported system to a naturally spawning system. Until we have the additional habitat that's necessary, or the land management practices in place, we absolutely need hatcheries. <laughs> it's to our benefit to help them so that we have another generation of salmon that we can go fishing for. I've eaten their smoked salmon and I, I've heard them tell me how they do it, but. I've never been successful at it. I'd like to learn that from Jay. Being able to, to show Norm um, the process was incredible. 
you know, I was fortunate enough to, to be able to learn it. Hopefully, you know, he'll pass it on to his kids or grandkids. What a wonderful gift that they're giving me and to share our love for the fish. And those salmon aren't just for tribal members. I mean, they don't have tags on there that says, well, I'm a tribal member, or, you know, fish, and you're a non-tribal member fish. Going back to some of the traditional foods is definitely one step in getting to where I need to be. So I've probably lost 40 pounds in the last six months. The seafoods and living off of the land was a part of growing up. You know, we didn't have a McDonald's or a Burger King on every corner. What I want for our young people more than anything would be to learn their history. I'm the elder now, you know? <laughs> and so I think it's my job to teach as many as I can um, while I can. I want to pass on a deep respect for what we have and, and hopefully a desire to keep it. That green one's a good one too. That's why I'm sitting here today, because I want all our communities, Native American and others, to have salmon for the future.